Hello everybody, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Yeah, I was a little distracted here. I'll tell you about it in just a minute. I've got kind of a mess going on in my office. Hi Kathy, you're the first one to show up. Connie is right behind you. <laughs> Mary, welcome. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday or had a wonderful Sunday. It's just about over, right? Yeah, we had a busy weekend. Um, the kids were here. My stepdaughter Stephanie and her boyfriend and his two sons came Friday, Saturday. And um, we had a great day for the pool. It was hot and sunny and beautiful. Today we had a little bit sporadic rain on and off. So we would just go under the pavilion, you know, my future tiki bar. <laughs> And um, wait for it to quit raining and then go back out in the pool. It got super, super hot in between all the little rainstorms. Yeah, so it was, it was pretty nice. And it was it's very, very hot and humid here in Menasha, Wisconsin. Like crazy humid So and hot. So it was a nice day for a little pool fun. And um, I didn't come inside probably till about 3 o'clock. And then I thought, oh, I better get busy because I get to play with you guys tonight. <laughs> So I just went out in the garage and I um, needed to check with Steve to see if he was streaming music because remember that ha that causes problems with our internet streaming quality. And so I ran out to the garage and I asked him if he was streaming music. He's not. He's just watching TV. I came back in here and I look on the floor. There's water all over the floor. And I'm like, what, whoa, 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 what's going on? What's happening? And I'm like, where could water be coming from? Well, here my portable air conditioner is sitting on a chair, so the hose, the exhaust hose will reach the window. And one of the little um, wheels kind of tipped off the chair, so it was tipped a little bit. And it is, it has got water running all over my office. <laughs> yeah, so I ran in the bathroom quick. And this is like three minutes before I'm supposed to be on here. I ran in the bathroom and grabbed a big towel and threw it on the floor, and I'm sure it's going to ruin my floor. Yeah. So. <laughs> I guess I wanted a new floor anyways, right? And I shouldn't. I shouldn't because this floor is new. Like when I redid my office three years ago, I put new flooring in. So, yay. <laughs> What's a girl going to do, right? Oh, well. Oh, and Cindy says she had Hurricane Hannah yesterday. She lives in South Texas. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, so my water problems are pretty minimal, right? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, crazy. Crazy, crazy night. So, I have some, um, I have a really cool fun fold for you tonight. And I'm going to warn you ahead of time, it looks very intimidating. But once you see me make it, you're not going to believe how very simplistic it is. So I'm excited to show that to you tonight. And then what else? Um, we have a new store coming to Stampin' Up. And <laughs> Connie says, I love that you are still smiling. What are you going to do? Right? It's like I'm supposed to be live in three minutes. I've got a pool of water all over the floor. It ran all the way from the corner over there under my desk and it was coming out towards the door. And I'm like, the show must go on. <laughs> right? I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Oh, somebody just asked me something there. Yeah, I wasn't planning on cleaning my floor, Sue. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't even know the last time I cleaned my floor. <laughs> I vacuum it all the time, and it looks really nice. So I've never, I don't even know, I think I washed it once. Isn't that, is that kind of creepy? Should I not tell people that? It's about three years old. Hi, Brody. And, um, yeah, I've only really washed it once, but it looks great. Except now it's going to have um, the, you know, in between the planking, it's like, you know, that fake wood flooring plank stuff. In between that, now it's going to raise up and get all stupid because of the water. I just know it. <laughs> Whatever. The small potatoes compared to the hurricane in Texas. My goodness. Anywho, um, yeah, so we have a new store coming to Stampin' Up. Um, 
the store is going to be opening August 4th. What does that mean? Not like a new store you can go to, but where you go place your orders online, that is going to be all new. And um, what, the reason why I'm telling you is, first of all, you're going to see a brand new store. Like everything's going to be different. It's supposed to be much easier to navigate and search for stuff and, and just a lot easier because our store wasn't always that user friendly. That's putting it pretty mild. But um, the reason why I'm telling you is because if you have the online store bookmarked on any of your devices, your phone, I don't know if you can do that. Yeah, you can do that on your phone. Your phone, your iPads, your tablets, your um, Kindles, your laptops, whatever. If you have that bookmarked, that link isn't going to work anymore because it's a new link. So I just want to let you know that. Now the other thing that's going to happen, if you have auto fill for passwords, I do on my on my laptop. When I start, um, when I go to a site, it already has my username and my password all in there, and I just click log in or whatever the case may be. It's your password is not going to auto fill into that new store website. So I just want you to know that. So if you don't know what your password is, um, you need to reset it now so that when that new store comes on board on August 4th, you're going to be ready for it. So I just want to give everybody fair warning that your bookmarks probably aren't going to work, your favorite tabs or whatever you have going on. And um, you'll want to update that now so you don't run into any problems then. Do it when you have a few minutes rather than you're trying to get an order in and you need to leave to go out for your Friday night fish fry but you can't get your order in because you can't remember your password because we got a new website you know all the things all the things that happen when you're in a hurry so um Val Cindy is doing amazing I got to babysit her on Wednesday night it's kind of a funny story oh I have a whole funny story do you guys have time tonight because I have some stories <laughs> So um, Wednesday nights, Haley and Jared play on a kickball league, and so they play kickball, and I switch off with his parents babysitting every other Wednesday. So Wednesday, we got home from Marquette, Michigan, and I had to go babysit that night. Well, when we got home from Marquette, we took Steve's truck over to a, t a couple towns away and dropped it off to get the exhaust something or another fixed and um, left it there. And so... We get home, Steve has golf league on Wednesday nights, and so he's like, okay, I'm going to golf. I'm like, okay, bye, have fun, good luck, whatever, you know, the whole doo-doo-doo. Give him a little kiss on the cheek, and away he went. And so it's time for me to leave to go over to Haley and Jared's house, because I babysit there. It's just easier for everybody, right? And um, I put my purse on, and I always take my laptop with me. I never open it and do anything with it. <laughs> I always think that I, she's going to sleep, I'm going to get all this work done, but if she sleeps, I sleep, so it doesn't work. Anyways, I, I get my laptop, I get my purse, I'm ready to go out the door, and I just happen to go, hmm. I go running over to the kitchen window and look out, confirming that I don't even have a vehicle. <laughs> I have no car, because remember, I got rid of my truck, I don't even own a car anymore. Um, we have the truck, which we use for mostly hunting, and then Steve's car. And he just left to go golfing, and his truck is in the shop. So I'm like, huh. <laughs> so I quick text Haley, I don't have a car. And she quickly texted Jared. He was just getting off work, and he works in the town over. So he stopped and picked me up and then took me over to their house. And then he had to bring the babysitter home. I always call it granny sitting. I get to go granny sitting on every other Wednesday night. So it was kind of funny because it was like, how how did Steve leave knowing that I had to go babysit? He knows that I always go there and it didn't connect for him that I didn't have a vehicle to go babysit. But in his defense, he did tell me that when he's not thinking about me, he thinks about golf. So he thinks about golf a lot. And he obviously wasn't thinking about me Wednesday night when I didn't have a car to go babysit. Anyways, we went to Marquette, Michigan, Monday, Tuesday, came home Wednesday. Had a fabulous time there. We met up with Connie, who's watching tonight. 
um, and had dinner with her and her husband. I think it's your husband. Isn't it your husband? I don't know for sure. But her and Dean. And um, it was lovely. Steve and Dean got along super good. And Connie told me that... <laughs> Connie told me that um, Dean really likes Steve, and Steve goes, yeah, he's really nice. I think we could get along good. So that worked out great. And we went out for this funny named meet that I can't remember what it is, but it's um, it's from the UP. It tastes like kind of like pizza sausage, and we had a sandwich with this funny meat, kudagi or something like that. And um, Connie's going to tell us in just a minute what it was called, so watch the comments. But it was delicious. Marquette, Michigan was beautiful. It's a beautiful city. Um, we rode our bikes along Lake Superior. There you go. Kudaji. There you go. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Kudaji. Kudaji. Baby. Anyways, um, we rode our bikes along Lake Superior, and that was absolutely beautiful. And we decided that we didn't leave ourselves enough time. Like, we should have stayed at least another day or two. So, Connie will be back. And um, my bike rack came in on Monday after we left. I bought a bike rack for the car, so we couldn't take the car. We had to take the truck. Kudigi. Kudigi. That's what it's called. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> it was really good. And um, I am not freezing up here, Vicki. I'm watching on my laptop, so I think it's your internet connection, and I'm really sorry. Because I don't appear to be freezing up. Does anybody else see that happening? I don't see that happening here. But so anyways, Marquette, Michigan was beautiful. Our hotel was great. Um, I slept a lot. <laughs> Connie says, come back anytime. We'll be back because I want to go for a ride in their boat. We didn't get to do that. She offered to take us for a ride in the boat on Lake Superior. But we were supposed to get storms that night and it was supposed to rain. So we couldn't, we couldn't go out on the boat. Because Lake Superior is like a pretty scary place in a storm, I'll tell you that. Um... But yeah, we had a great time, and we will be back. And oh, thank you guys. It's not freezing, so I'm really sorry. It's it's your end. Who, the, whoever's having freezing problems, that's not. Um, I'm like, why is everybody talking about freezing? It's like 95 degrees here. <laughs> Squirrel. I forget so easily what we were talking about. Um, but we'll be back to Marquette. It was really pretty, and we really enjoyed it. And the bike rack came in. After we left, we had to take the truck because the bike rack never came, but now we have it. But then it came, and we don't have the adapter to put it on the hitch because it's too small for the big hitch. Yeah, it's it's a whole thing. You know, like the water on my floor right now. Whatever. <laughs> we'll get it figured out. Um, but anyways, I wanted to give you guys an update on John. So Steve told me yesterday that he thinks John backed into something with this work truck because there is now a dent in it. And then I have another funny little story. Are you guys are you guys good tonight? Like, are you okay with all my stories? Because I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. Um, my friend Debbie, oh, where did it go? Right here. My friend Debbie dropped off this beautiful little card. Look at how cute this is. Just a note, love it. And she dropped off a back scratcher because I think a couple weeks ago I had an itch in my back and I couldn't reach it and it kept bothering me. So now I have this and I love it. But while Debbie was standing on my front porch talking to me, somebody came walking down our sidewalk with a big dog and I couldn't see who the person was because the tree was in the way. But then um, I'm like, oh, look at that. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, that's my neighbor. And Debbie's standing there. She's never met my neighbor. And she goes, oh, is that John? <laughs> I said, it is John. <laughs> so it's really funny. But anyways, Steve thinks that John hit something with his truck, his work truck, because it's got a big dent in it. So I will keep you updated on John. We're not sure. Oh, and Connie, when we were out to dinner in Marquette, Michigan, she asked if there were any updates on John, too. So John is a celebrity. He doesn't even know it. For those of you that might be new to me, John is our neighbor, and uh, he lives right next door. And while the whole COVID quarantine thing is going on, you know, we got a little silly and we got a little bored. And so Steve would come walking in my office, and when the door's closed, he knows that I'm shooting videos. So, you know, you just stay out there. Don't interrupt me. But the door is closed, and he comes walking in. He'll open it a little bit first. I'm like, yeah, come on in. And he comes walking in, and he goes... John just got home <laughs> and we would start laughing because we had 
nothing else to do than to monitor the neighbors, right? So that's where the John stories come from. And um, so I'll keep you up to date on John and I'll let you know if I find out anything about the dent, I'll let you know. And Colleen, you're welcome for the beautiful card. <laughs> oh my gosh, Diane says they were 100 and tomorrow is 110 to 115. You must be in Arizona. I think so. And Kathy has some back scratches around the house and the summer home. My summer home is in the driveway. Stephanie and the kids stayed out there last night and um, they thoroughly enjoyed it. So I was glad we had it here. Does John have a wife? Yes, he does. He has a wife and he has a couple kids. His kids are grown and out of the house and his wife still lives with him. Is there anything else you'd like to know about John? <laughs> yeah, it's just a funny thing we do. No, no harm intended. And no, John doesn't watch my show. So, um, <laughs> anyways, I was going to tell you guys about the stripper pole story too, but maybe I'll save that for another time. Maybe at the end, I'll tell you. Remind me. <laughs> I'll tell you about the stripper pole. It's kind of funny. Okay, so I have a ton of new kits that I just put out. And John is privately watching me. <laughs> well, see, we don't even know what's going on with John anymore, you guys. Because we brought the summer home here to our home. And it's parked in the driveway. So now we can't even see John's driveway and his house and his comings and goings. So he's a little distraught. He doesn't know what to do with himself because he can't even see when John is coming and going. But apparently he's keeping track because he's got a dent. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing that I did yesterday, I decided that I love dessert. I know I shouldn't, but I do. I'm a sugar girl. I love dessert. And I decided that I was going to make desserts for our weekends, our Sunday fun days or whatever's going on because I don't want to eat them all. And if I make them for every time we're going to have a, a backyard full of people, then I won't. I'll get a little bit, but I won't eat them all, right? So yesterday I made a Buster Bar ice cream cake. Boom. And Steve, when I told him what I was going to make, he wanted me to make pretzel strawberry jello bars, which are good. But I decided to make this, and when I told him about what I was going to make, he said, oh, that's too heavy. I'm like, whatever. I don't care what you think, because I, I didn't. <laughs> and when we had the Buster Bar ice cream cake last night, he's like, oh, my, this is good. I'm like, I know, right? It's just like a Buster Bar from Dairy Queen. So... I wrote that down on a little note. I keep looking at my little note here. I wrote it down on a little note. So when we're done tonight, I am going to share that recipe with you. It is amazing. And it was pretty easy to make too. So yeah, I was cooking all weekend. Like I made summer salad. I made, um, what else did I make? Oh, cheesy hash browns and the Buster Bar, Buster Bar ice cream cake. Isn't it funny that I can't remember the name of it, but I love them. <laughs> At Dairy Queen. Yes, I'll share the recipe. I promise I will share the recipe with you guys because it was so delicious. And if you're ever going to have company and it's summer and it's hot, it is a dis just a, the most delicious dessert. And so Steve had more too. So today he's like, where's that? Where's that ice cream cake thing you made? Yeah. And did you know that they have chocolate graham crackers? Who knew? Yeah. Well, that's in the ice cream cake. So you'll, you'll get the whole full thing. Let me put Debbie's card back here. So I have a ton of mail to still show you. Like, I haven't caught up from my birthday yet. I've opened everything, and I've read all the notes that you guys have sent me. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because they are so, you guys are so sweet. I am so lucky to have you in my life, and I just want you to know that. But I will show some of the um, cards and gifts. I'm going to keep doing that every Sunday until we get to the bottom of my bin. Promise. So, and Cynthia says she loves the pretzel dessert. Yeah, I make a jello pretzel thing in a bowl, but this was actually bars, and I've never made that before, but it looked really good. Same kind of idea, but in a bar. So, I'm going to try that one of these times. Anyways, did I tell you all the things? I told you everything except the stripper pole. Okay, I have so much happy, so much happy kit just released. This was so much fun to make. I can't even tell you. I absolutely love the dyes. 
and um, I have a so much so much happy kit for $49 just want to let you know that and then you have the option to add on the dies and the, I almost hit myself with this it's like whoa the dies and the stamp set if you don't have them for an additional $53 yes $53 I'm looking at my notes all over my pole not the stripper pole a different pole and <laughs> yes Vicki don't worry I will share the recipe for the peanut Buster ice cream cake. Um, and then I have the Celebrate Sunflowers. We're going to be using the Sunflower Bundle tonight for the really cool card that I'm going to share with you. And so I'll talk all about the Celebrate Sunflowers online class. And then I have, I made up a bunch of extra of the Artistry Bloom classes. And that is just an amazing bundle of product also. So I just want to let you guys know that I have all three of those classes right now. Um, the Artistry Blooms is ready to mail. So if you order that, I can send it out right away. The other two classes, I will be putting in an order tomorrow. I will get all my stuff here the next day. Don't judge me. Um, and then I'll get it cut and out in the mail this week for so much happy and celebrate sunflowers because next week, Monday, we're going camping for a week. Woot, woot. Yeah, with Haley and Jared and we're taking Molly and um, we're going to have a blast. And Anna and Andy are maybe going to come visit for a day or two and stay in a tent and it's just going to be super cool and fun just like a little family adventure. We're taking the summer home. We're moving her out of the driveway. <laughs> And Connie says, order these classes. They're wonderful. Thank you so much, Connie. They really are fun. All right. I have prizes to give away before we start stamping. So I just um, saw somebody that asked about my million, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. First of all, we have, I have some, a half a pack of our dinosaur paper and also a pack of, red ribbon to go with it. This is for leaving a comment. So if you're watching me now, please leave at least one comment. Oh, thank you. Linda says the artistry blooms and sunflower projects are phenomenal. Yes. The PDF files with all the um, information and video links are done and I have already emailed those out. And I think I was scheduled to um, have the celebrate sunflowers done by 731 and I got it done Friday. I know I'm kind of winning right now and except for the water on the floor um, and maybe the stripper pole story that I'll tell you about later that wasn't so winning and then um, the so much happy I already have that PDF class done and ready to roll and this is lovely lipstick ribbon thank you I kind of forgot because it comes I think with a combo pack and I don't have any label on it so anyways Leave a comment. You'll get entered in a drawing to win fabulous prizes. <laughs> I love saying that. Fabulous. And tonight, from watching last week and commenting, Nancy Hun from Saverna Park, Maryland, you are the winner of the ribbon and a half a pack of designer series paper. Congratulations. And another way to win when you watch me is to share my video. You can click on that share button right now and you will also be entered in another drawing to win fabulous prizes. And I have Poppy Parade, beautiful ribbon, and also the golf paper. And for sharing my video last week, Lori Hyde of Menasha, Wisconsin, right here in my own town, Menasha, Wisconsin, you are the big winner of this. And then third, you have an opportunity to win prizes when you order from me. And um, last week, between last week and tonight, my big winner for placing an order is Deborah Syke from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. You're going to get one of these beautiful kerchief card kits. Now, I want to make sure you know, I had somebody email me and say, Kelly, what is the name of that card kit? I cannot find it in the store. This is no longer available for sale, which makes it really more valuable or sought after that's the word I was looking for sought after because um, it's no longer available this was one of our celebration items in January February and March that you could get for free but it only lasted like in January because it was so popular everybody ordered them this is going out to Deborah Syke of Menominee Falls Wisconsin that's where my brother lives too by the way 
And then somebody asked about my million dollar journey. And I am getting, hang on, I got a towel on my chair because I came in here with my suit, my swimsuit on earlier and my butt was wet from being in the pool. Just want to clarify. <laughs> I don't think I needed to, right? And um, so my chair's wet, so I got a towel on there and it's slipping out. But anyways, um, I think the last time I announced my million dollar journey, I was in the last $10,000 stretch, right, you guys? I'm pretty sure that I said that. Well, in doing that, I just got so excited about the whole idea that I forgot to tear off my second to the last um, chain. So, boom, I'm on my last $10,000 and even better than that, I wrote down the number because I knew I would never remember it, even though I just looked it up. <laughs> Let's be clear, I have $4,596 to go before I hit my million. I am super duper excited. Stampin' Up! is watching me like a hawk. Um, we've been in contact several times because this is a big to-do, and they make a big to-do about it, and it's super exciting, and I can't hardly wait to hit it. All of your orders are appreciated. Um, people have been asking me how, like, like if you're a demonstrator or you have a demonstrator that you're loyal to, um, how can, is there any way that you can help reach that million dollars? And, um, yeah, when you order my kits, my kits contain product, whether it's the So Much Happy kit contains a bunch of product or the July Celebrate Sunflowers kit. Um, all of it has product in it and every little bit of that helps me, so... That's one way, if you if you want to help, that's one way you can do it. Um, if you're a demonstrator and you don't want to place orders with me, I get that. So, I have one, I know this is backwards too, but it says one million. And um, I have one, one million dollar chain to go. I, or I mean, a tenth, one more chain, not a million dollar chain, but one more chain. And I am only 40, about $4,600 away from hitting my million, so... I know it's pretty exciting, right? You'll do that before the end of the summer. Tina, I should probably have that in a couple weeks. Yeah. So, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Now, every time I break off another chain, I give away another prize. And guess what I'm giving away today? Hand lettered pros. This entire alphabet die. This was a gift to me, and I think it came, oh gosh, I hope I don't get this wrong. I think it maybe came from Terry Mullinex. Terry, if you're watching, can you tell me if I'm right? Um, you guys know I have a terrible memory. No disrespect to anybody. Everything is appreciated. I just always feel like such a butthead when I can't remember. Um, but I'm giving this away. It was donated to me, I think by Terry. And... Um, our winner, uh, I'm reading the comments and trying to think and talk at the same time. Our winner is Susan Loring from Honesdale, Pennsylvania. This is coming your way. Thank you guys so much for all of your support and help and the whole deal. Wow, my hair looks like really big, doesn't it? Whew, I'm getting warm. I'm afraid to turn on my air conditioner because I've got water all over the floor. Oh my lord, it ran under my cabinet, so it's all under there. It's going to wreck everything. But, well, you know, whatever. The show must go on, right? <laughs> Tina just asked, are you going to do a breaking news YouTube video when you hit it? Um, I will probably do a, um, well, I don't know if I'll do a Facebook Live or not. It just depends on when it hits, because it could hit while I'm camping. <laughs> and then you'll see Kelly in the raw, no, not raw, like not naked. I would never do that. But we'll talk about the stripper pole later. No, I'm just kidding. There's nothing naked about that either. It's nothing obscene. Um, but anyways, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. But as soon as I do hit my million, Stampin' Up! sends out a huge thing about it. So that's kind of pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. I've never worked for a company... <laughs> Tina, thank you. She says you look very young. Thank you so much. I love you. Um, I've never worked for a company where you get more 
kudos and support and they're just rooting for you and it's sincere it's just so sincere like my first convention that I ever went to was in Orlando Florida back in 2004 I had only signed up I was a demonstrator from March until that summer when we went to that convention one of the things that I came away with that from that convention was how Stampin' Up! their theme was you put your family first. You take care of your family and your loved ones. And then your job comes someplace after that. And I was just always so touched by that. And it has held through since 2004, all these years. They put, they put us and our needs and our family first. And I, I just expected the convention to be sell, sell, sell. Sell some more stuff. And it was so not like that. It's just amazing. They're just so good to us. So anyways, um, I am so blessed to work for such an amazing company that really rewards us for our hard work. And, and you guys know, and you've told me, and I know that you know, that we work hard. Um, but we also get rewarded in amazing ways. So that's been kind of fantastic. And I'm not allowed to talk about it anymore. <laughs> because... No, I can't even, yeah. So, anyways, um, I think that we're ready to stamp. I think I'm going to have a hot flash here shortly. And I'm looking at my ceiling fan, so hang tight. Wow, I turned that on. I'm afraid to turn on my air conditioner. So if I start dripping onto the cardstock, you know, it's going to be gross, right? <laughs> what did you try to order today? I see Susan saying that she tried to order something today. And um, when will my stamp set come out? Um, I don't even know what my stamp set is going to be, quite frankly. You know, some people really have a thing where, like, um, Connie Stewart just had hers come out in this catalog. And hers is very retro. And it's all about um, nothing's better than. I did a kit class with it. Nothing's better than chocolate, cocktails, and something else. Uh, cookies. And coffee. And, um, you know, so she has a, she has a style. She's very retro in what she does. And I, I just don't know. I don't know what my style is. I don't know what I want to be my stamp set. I just, it's not like I've, I'm, I'm like sitting here going, oh my gosh, I can't wait to design X, Y, Z. I just, I don't know. Cause I got this squirrel problem probably, right? I can't even focus on all that. Okay. I'm going to move my box here. Oh, the other thing, before I forget, I want to let you know that coming out this week is a paper pumpkin blog hop, so be watching for that. I can't hardly wait to play with my paper pumpkin. The last time um, Haley actually designed my paper pumpkin um, blog hop cards, it's so hard to watch and read and talk and think. That's such a challenge. So, first off, I've got a super duper easy little card for you, and it's part of a challenge. So, I want to share that with you. Um, we're going to do a little mystery stamping. <laughs> Squirrels and crowns, that's a good one. I love it. Um, I am ready to flip the camera around so that you can see what I'm doing on my tabletop. So, if you get motion sickness, please close your eyes. And I will tell you when you can open them. Okay? Hang on. Don't open them yet. I'm not ready. Got to get everything straight. Get my cord put up. What do you... Take a drink. Everybody take a breath. Take a drink. What are you guys drinking tonight? Okay. I do love fonts, Rhonda. That's a really good idea. Sentiments. Yeah, you know, that's what Rhonda Wade did. This is her stamp set, and I absolutely love it. I love her sayings. I love her fonts, and I think maybe that's kind of something that I might like. So that's definitely an option. So thank you for mentioning that. My stamp set should contain a crown, a summer home, a squirrel, and whatever I'm drinking. <laughs> I don't know that that will sell, but that's a really good idea. Okay, first thing we're going to do here, I'm using the ridiculously awesome stamp set, and you guys know that I love big greetings, and that's another option is a big greeting, because I really love big greetings. Um, we're going to be using this. 
I've got a bunch of cards to share with you, but here's what we're going to do first. So I've got this little mystery challenge, mystery stamping challenge for you. I did this with my team for our team meeting last week. And I think you guys have heard me say that no matter where in the United States that you live, if you join my team, we have virtual team meetings. And that is so much fun. People, um, other people, not me, but uh, other members of the team will do demonstrations and show us really cool things. And so we do a whole meeting where I recognize people for their accomplishments and their anniversaries and all kinds of stuff. Um, and the majority of my team are discount shoppers. And so it's really fun for everybody to be involved in this. But one of the things I did for my team this last time is that I did a mystery stamping challenge. And what I did was I gave them some measurements and I gave them this. This is what I gave them. I said, and I will post this on my on my Facebook page, the page that you're on right now. Sharon, if you don't have any sound, oh, there's no sound. Oh, hang on. Can you guys still hear me? Oh, okay, so some people are, don't have sound. I don't know what's going on there. Other people do, so it's not me. Okay, Whew. I hope you get your sound fixed. I'm really sorry. But um, now where was I? Um, so this is what I did, is you need a card base. So this is five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock. You need a solid piece of cardstock, and these can be any color. And I will post this on my Facebook page so you guys can see it. A, another solid layer that is three and a quarter by five and a half. You don't need to write these down. I'll tell you again. Designer series paper that's three by five and a half. Some type of a label, a piece of ribbon, and some embellishments. So you get to pick anything you want. It can be retired, not retired, it can be current. Um, I would ask that, you know, it's kind of stamping up because that's what we do here, right? But it's at your discretion. So you're gonna take one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different items here and you're gonna make a card and then you're gonna share it on my Facebook page. And I'm going to put a graphic up that says mystery stamping. It'll have all the dimensions in it, two pictures, the mystery stamping and the all the dimensions. And then I will, um, you will then go to that post and let, just like you're going to put a comment in, you'll click on the photo and add a picture of your card. So just a little fun challenge for us to do. And um, I'll probably give a prize away. The deadline for this will be... Facebook Live next Sunday, okay? So between now and then, card base, um, a layer, a piece of DSP, any type of a label punched or die cut, a piece of ribbon, and embellishments, whatever you want. Rhinestones, um, what else do we have for sequins? Um, it could be any type of embellishment, but that's what you're going to create a card out of. These dimensions, and then the rest is up to you. Okay, so I'm going to show you my card. And this is gonna be super duper simple. Let's see, I'm, I'm looking for a tag right now, a tag punch, which is seems to be missing. And hang on, cause Haley might have it. Yeah, I don't know where my, Oh, here it is. Haley did not have it. Haley's coming over tonight to make some swap cards for me. I'm excited about that. I haven't seen her in a couple days. So I'm just going to take a piece of um, Whisper White. And then I've got this P.S. I Love You stamp. And since my card base is Melon Mambo, I am going to grab my Melon Mambo. And... We are going to try to stamp this on this one inch piece. Wish me luck. That's pretty darn good, isn't it? I'm pretty happy with that. Now Elizabeth is saying there's no sound also. How come nobody how come people are having problems with sound, do you guys think? 
had somebody else today email me and say that they couldn't get the sound to play when they watch my videos on my blog or YouTube. And that's a, that's your device. You need to find something is reset in your device and it's turned your sound off. So like if I hover, okay, so listen to this. If I hover over my screen right now on my laptop, a little speaker comes up and I can turn the sound off on up and down and on and off on there. If you click on that little speaker, you're going to see a little toggle switch that moves up and down, you guys. And that's on your phone. That's on all kinds of things. So you need to look for that. Okay. So here's my PS I love you. I'm going to bring this into my lovely labels. And remember Molly put the label on here for me. So it's lovely labs. <laughs> I had her on the sticker machine one day. It was really quite cute. And this is the one inch. I'm going to push this all the way in. And when I use this punch, I like to look at the back to make sure I've got everything in here and it looks like it's in the right place. There we go. Now I need to decide how much to cut off. So what I'm going to do here is just a little tip. Take this and bring it around to the other side. And then you can get this spaced about the same. I'm going to cut this off right here. You could put it in your paper trimmer if you're worried about not being able to get it straight. But I'm a professional, remember. I don't know if you should try this at home. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's just paper, people. <laughs> I like to say that because it's kind of funny. Well, I am kind of funny. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look at this again. See, I thought I had it in there all the way, but I don't. So that's why I kind of like to look at the back. And I think I have this cut just a little bit wider than one inch because it's kind of giving me some trouble. There we go. Now it looks great. Okay, so here's my label. I did pretty good on that, didn't I? We're going to take our card base and fold it in half. Thank you guys for those of you telling me that you have good sound. Um, I hope the people who don't have any sound get that fixed because it is on your screen someplace. You just need to kind of hover around with your cursor and then things pop up when you put your cursor over the picture or the video. Things will kind of come up. Okay, next. This is my, oops, hang on, my three and a quarter inch panel. And I'm going to take my designer series paper and I could use either side, but since I picked, picked Melon Mambo, I think I would rather have this side than this side, but either one would be fine, I guess. I'm going to add this to the back. And this goes all the way up to the top and the bottom. So you've just got the sides sticking out there with the contrasting color. And doesn't white look nice with this? It like really makes it pop. Now I'm going to take this. And of course you could stamp on your background here if you wanted to. I'm going to add this right over on the left. You can put it any place you want. That's the mystery stamping. So everybody's is going to be a little different, right? It can be like this. It can be like this. You can move it up. You can center it. You can move it down. Whatever suits your fancy. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my dimensionals. And I think I'm going to use quite a few of them here. So I've got that ready to roll. And now I'm going to get lazy and sit down, so you might have to turn your volume up because when I sit down, I get quieter. And I am not, I'm lazy. I sit when I stand. I don't like to stand up. So turn up your volume. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to grab some of our seal. Now I need to decide, I think I want my PS I love you to go right here. So I'm going to take my ribbon and I want it to zigzag back and forth. So I'm just going to take it and run a line of my seal tape right there. And now I'm going to run my ribbon just like this. And I don't want it to be real uniform or maybe. <laughs> I do. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, I need it to be just a little bit. I need it to be sticking out just a little bit more. I'll just make the, 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 the loops just a little bit bigger. There we go. Just like that. And now I'm going to cover up that strip of adhesive that I put on there. Look at that. Super simple, right? 
And then I chose the Artistry Blooms sequins. And this is the Artistry Blooms paper, by the way. So I've got all of these beautiful self-adhesive sequins on here. And I'm going to pick, whoops, I'm going to take the end off my take your pick tool. I love this tool. It's like one of my favorites. And we're going to put some sequins all over this. And you guys are going to find that the embellishments make all the difference with really blinging, whoops, really blinging this card up. We'll do some more, whoops, some more over here. And how about we'll put a yellow one on our little label here. Oh my gosh, I love, love, love these. How did I do? What do you think? Doesn't that, that bling just really, that's it. Okay, so this is our mystery stamping card. You're gonna take everything that I showed you here, adjust it to whatever you have, any type of label, any greeting set, any ribbon, any designer series paper, and any embellishment, and you're gonna make a card and you're gonna share it with me when um, I put the graphic up. Now, the important thing to remember is how to get to where you're supposed to share it because to be in the drawing, your card needs to be in the place with everybody else's card because I can't go hunting around. I just, I just can't, I don't have time for it. So um, you're going to go to my Facebook page, which is where you're watching me right now. It's a stamp above dash your creative coach. And you're going to scroll down until you see a graphic for mystery stamping. And then under that graphic where you would comment and say, oh, cute idea or thanks for the card or whatever. In there, there's a camera where you would type your words. There's a, you can click on that camera and you can pull a picture right from your phone and add it. You can only add one at a time. So a lot of times people will try to add two pictures. You can't, you can only add one picture at a time. So if you, if you make more than these, you can submit more if you want to, but you, can, you have to load one and post it and then load another one and post it. It's super easy. And I cannot wait to see what you guys make. Now I have three more cards that I shared with my team last week um, to show you all different, you know, all different labels, all different sizes everywhere, blah, blah, blah. But um, I'll show those to you guys next week on Sunday after I get to see all yours. So there you go. Ridiculously Awesome is a fantastic little stamp set. I'm gonna clean off my stamp here with my chamois. If you guys don't have a good thing to clean your stamps off with, this chamois is amazing and you can go right to my online store and do a search for chamois. And this is my current host code right now. My online store is on my blog in the right hand column. You'll find online store or order here or something. It says something like that, I don't even know. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I don't know. I don't know what it says, but You'll know it's a store, that's for sure. Okay, we are ready for our fun fold. Are we ready for a fun fold? I think we're ready for a fun fold. Okay, so I got mystery stamping over there. I'll put my punch back. And I've been wanting to show this to you guys for a long time. Now, when we get done here, I have a pile of Celebrate Sunflower cards to share with you. Don't let me forget right at the top of the list with the stripper pole story. Okay, here comes my two inch circle punch. We are going to be using flowers for every season, designer series paper. And hang on, I'm reading comments here. Okay, so Michelle is saying, telling me that a lot of people um, lost their sound when I flipped the camera, and she's telling me to be kind and try to help. I think I was, so that happened. And, oh, so Michelle is saying that she had to get off the video and come back in, and then her sound came back. That's so odd, isn't it? I have never heard of that happening before. But thank you, Michelle. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Okay, here we come. Let me put my little cheat sheet up here so I can give you all my dimensions. And all the pretty pretties. 
I am going to be using Smoky Slate and Misty Moonlight. Yes, Lisa, I have received my paper pumpkin for this month. So if you haven't gotten yours, I'm not sure when you usually get it, but if it seems to be really late, give Stampin' Up! a call and they will check into that for you. Yes, and, and Kathy, thank you. Kathy says, remember, she can't watch all the comments while stamping, and I really can. It's tr super tricky. Okay, so here comes our layers. Oh, I've actually got two of them to make here. <laughs> so, here we go. I am going to be using the Layering Circles Scallop Circle. And I've got a Whisper White card base. All of these dimensions will be on my blog when I post the still photos. So you guys can write them down now or you can just head over there and look at them. And again, here's my blog. This is four and a quarter by seven and a half. And we are going to do some scoring right away. Now this is called a twisted gatefold card. Like I said, don't let this intimidate you. It looks like crazy. You're never gonna be able to make it, but it is so simple, it's hard to believe. Okay, we're gonna score this at two and a half on the long side and then at five. Okay, so now we've got a score line here and a score line here. Now we're going to take our card and we're gonna score from the top left corner to this first score line at a diagonal. So I am putting my cardstock so that the point is in the channel and the score line down here is in the channel. And I'm scoring like that. And now we're gonna pull it over to this last panel and we're gonna do the same thing, top left to the bottom corner. Just wanna make sure I have this straight. Don't let it move on you. You know that's easy. Okay, so here's what we have now. This folds this way. This folds this way. This folds back. And this folds this way. And this is what you're gonna end up with. You wanna see it again? This folds back. This folds over. This folds back. This folds over. Isn't that cool? Okay, now wait and see what I do with it. Um, next, you're going to need some designer series paper. And I chose the flowers for every season. And you're gonna need three pieces, two in one pattern and one in another. These are all two and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And then one piece that matches this one that is just a little bit bigger. Or you can make it the same size if you want, but I made mine a little bit bigger. This is two and three eighths by four and an eighth. So it's just, here I'll tip it over. It's just a little bit taller. See what I'm saying? This is, this is the taller one. So we've got these three, two and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And we are going to take them and we're going to cut from the top left to the bottom right on a diagonal. Make sure I got this in the channel just right. You wanna make sure you get the tips of your pieces. Okay, so this is what we have, easy peasy. And then we're gonna take these two and we are going to cut from the top left to the bottom right. Here's another set, just like that. And then this last one is gonna be opposite. We're gonna cut from the top right to the bottom left. And I'm not really sure that that matters but that's what I'm going to tell you because it mattered on the width, the ones that I made. I cut the first one wrong, so I just want you to know that this is how it did actually work for me. So, there we go. Does that make sense? 
just like that, just like that. Okay, I'm actually gonna show you this twice, so don't get, don't leave. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to bring in my card base. Oh, let's do our stamping now, because then we can just assemble and we'll do it all together. I've got a scrap of Whisper White, and let's see. Um, where did my stamp, oh, here's my stamps. Know that you are loved. I'm gonna use Misty Moonlight. This is a new in color, and I really, really, really like it. It's, it's this color, and it's so pretty. So I'm gonna stamp this on my scrap. And then I'm gonna punch it out with a two inch circle punch. And I'm gonna kinda, it's not really just centered, but it's kind of more towards the top of the circle, okay? And now I wanted something that matched my, um, my paper, this paper. So I thought Smoky Slate, right? That looks, that looks good with Smoky Slate, I think. Okay, then I'm going to bring in the sunflower. Did I even, I didn't even show this to you. I'm using the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set. I'm not using the dies this time, but just the stamp set. And I'm going to stamp my sunflower in the smoky slate. And I'm just going to come in here and stamp a little bit of that flower on my circle. Then we're going to take our scalloped circle from the layering circles and die cut a scallop circle from a scrap of misty moonlight and we're going to have this so we can glue that on there right away and let's see if we can get it straight kelly because you just told everybody you're a professional <laughs> right <laughs> and then i think i will continue with the gray and I'll just put a little bit of the flower down here. This white piece is two by three and three quarters. And again, all of these dimensions will be listed on my blog. We're gonna clean this off right away. I stamped a dark color into my, I think, bumblebee ink pad the other day, and I was so disgusted with myself. I know we've all done it, and we're just being human, right? But yeah, it was like, oh. Okay, we're gonna take this and glue that to our bigger piece of designer series paper. This was a two and three eighths by four and an eighth and we can add that right now. There we go, wanna get it straight. And now I'm gonna come in with our funky little card base here. And I'm gonna burnish all of these edges so that it will lay nicely. You always want to get a good crisp burnish on your fold lines. That's a that's a word that I use from my UK demonstrator friends. I learned the word burnish and I thought it sounded really fancy. So you know how I like fancy things. <laughs> okay, open up your card. This is going right in the middle. This is our middle panel. So we're gonna put this right in here. Just got a little tiny border at the top and at the bottom. It's pretty already, right? Now we're gonna take these two floral pieces and we're gonna add them right here. Here we go. By the way, I did use a Whisper White Thick card base. I don't know if I said that or not, but it is Whisper White Thick. Here comes the other one. Okay. And now we've got this one and this one. So this one, I can see, will fit right here, right? So we're gonna just open that up a little bit right in here and then this one is going to go right over here a 
Oops, hang on, I didn't get it. Space really good there. There we go. Okay. And now we're going to do the back side. Oops, maybe. Oh no, did I cut it wrong? Meh. I did. I cut it wrong. No, I didn't. It goes right here. Okay. I'm like, how did I do that wrong? This piece goes right here. Okay, sorry. I was like freaking out a little bit. Not enough to get a hot flash. <laughs> Just a little bit. Here comes the other one. Yeah. Okay, is this not cool? Ready? Okay, it goes together just like this. And then I'm going to, hmm, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to glue my circle to only to this half. So I'm kind of looking at this. I'm gonna put my finger right here and Put some glue over on this side, just on that one side. And now I'm holding my card so that the flat edge of this middle panel when it's folded is the bottom of my card. And I'm going to put my little circle right in here. I'm just centering it in the middle. Okay, then we are going to add, this is the um, Flowers for Every Season Ribbon Combo Pack. You get all three of these ribbons in there. And this is twine with some of the blue in it that I thought was really cool. I'm going to bring in a bow jig. Now, have to tell you about the bow jigs. You guys know that my friend Denise, her husband was making these for a while. And anytime somebody wanted a bow jig, I'm gonna wrap this three times. Anytime somebody wanted a bow jig, they would email me and I would forward that email on to Denise and she would get them a bow jig and they'd pay for it and the whole deal. Well, Denise and her husband aren't doing that anymore. But I just had a new stamping friend, Cindy, whose husband made one and it's pretty fancy. Like, it's very attractive. This is not one that Denise made either, it's, but this is one I got someplace. And um, it's got even a little thing on the end that slides over and it holds the nails so you can like take the nails out put them in the end and travel with it it's really cool so if anybody would like a bow jig they're ten dollars that includes shipping you pop me an email at kelly at a stamp .com and i will forward your email to my friend cindy and she'll hook you up with a bow jig they're amazing okay mini glue dot and by the way, I don't get any kickbacks from that. It's just, and, and he, believe me, he's not really making anything either because shipping is so expensive. But it's just kind of a nice thing to have, and we love them, and everybody should have one. That's so her husband needed, I think, something to do, maybe. <laughs> kind of like my husband. My husband just golfs. <laughs> but, okay, so look at how cute that is. And then... Oh, and Kathy says she really likes this card idea. Thank you so much. Uh, Judith does not have a bow jig yet. So there you go, Judith. I'm going to hook you up. And now I'm going to put on some of the in-color enamel dots that look so pretty and match all of the new in-colors. Look at how cute that is, you guys. What do you think? Ready? You right in here. Then, we must have a matching envelope. I just thought that was a necessity. And then I'll show you how to put this in your envelope. So I'm just putting some glue, whoops, on my flap. And this is two and a half by six inch piece of the designer series paper. This is just a great way to get your paper used up, make a beautiful envelope to match your beautiful card. And don't hoard the paper, cut it and use it. And you guys have heard me say this before, right? But if you order two packs of designer series paper, you won't feel so bad about opening and cutting them. It's a mind game that we play with ourselves because you think that one card is gonna come along and you're not gonna have any more of this pattern left to make it. But in, in reality, all you do is hoard your paper and never use it and then it goes out of style because this is very trendy. Look at how cute this is. Okay, now, hang on, I've got a piece of white here. 
This is a cheap piece of cardstock. This is not CFP Duck cardstock. This is garbagey cardstock that I have for these types of things. And if you have bumps and lumps, I will take this and put this over the front of my cards before I slide it into the envelope so that you don't have to pay extra postage. And I know that my rhinestones and stuff aren't going to bust through my envelope. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? This fits right inside of an envelope. It is super duper cute. Let's see. It does kind of stand up. It's a little weird. But when I first saw this, it's called a twisted gatefold. When I first saw this card, I was like, oh my lord, I just don't even know. Because there's so much, so much going on, right? There's twists and angles, and this is what you truly call paper engineering. Crazy stuff. But at one of our team meetings, Gina Bulo demonstrated how to make this. And I stood over her shoulder holding the camera so that everybody across the country could watch her that's on my team. And I was shocked at how super simple this was. You've got two score lines, and then you do a diagonal and a diagonal and cut your layers. And it was just so simple. I was amazed. And so I knew this was something that I had to share with you guys. Now remember, if you want to join my team as a discount shopper or if you want to build a business, we can certainly talk about that too. But if you want to join my team as a discount shopper, you get to learn all these things just like I do from our team meetings, which are super duper fun. So you let me know. I have a actual um, page on my blog that has all the details about being a discount shopper, all the benefits that you get and all the things. But there's our super cute card. Now I've got two more one that I'm just going to show you that I have made already because of course I had to practice so I wouldn't come on here and look like a complete idiot. <laughs> and I'm going to make another one for you quick. This one I'm going to use just jade. I've got all of my little, I'm going to use this pattern of designer series paper and this pattern. Okay. Um, here's my envelope, so we know what we need to do to that, and I'm starting to sweat profusely. Is that gross? Should I not tell you that? It's getting super, super hot in here, and I've got fans going all over, but I'm afraid to turn my air back on because, oh, there's water all over the floor. And where's my husband? He should have been watching my Facebook Live and come in here and clean up this mess for me. <laughs> That's funny, even as it's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Oh, another thing that I made yesterday was summer salad. I completely forgot to mention that. I did a lot of food prep. I, I wouldn't call it cooking because I didn't, the only thing I, well, I threw the potatoes in a crock pot. I guess you'd call that cooking. The rest of it didn't really involve any cooking, except the summer salad. You got to cook the bacon. Oh my gosh, I love summer salad. My family, well, Haley doesn't like it, but she doesn't like vegetables. Everybody else loves it. Look how pretty that is. Again, flowers for every season. This is the pink right here. And then the other pattern that I'm using is the one right there. Hang on while I fan myself. Cheapers. And let's have a drink. Mm. Did I tell you guys about the mojitos last weekend? Oh my lord, they were so good. You guys know, I know it sounds like I'm just so lush, but I'm not. I really don't drink much. Everybody's like laughing, but it's true. And ask, ask Connie. When we went up to the UP, I had iced tea. I mean, I'm, I'm just not much of a drinker, but I'll tell you what, those mojitos, if Steph and Anna were here all the time making those, I could have some serious problems. <laughs> okay, same thing, four and a quarter by seven and a half. This is, I'm, we're gonna score it two and a half and five. And then we're gonna score from the top corner down. On, there's three panels here, one, two, three. Oh, and somebody sent me this too. I'll get the card in a minute. Is that not adorable? It's a crown ring. Super cute. Um, from the top corner to the score line, the first score line, so we gotta get this lined up in here. And I love the paper cutter. If you guys are in need of a new paper cutter, Stampin' Up's paper cutter is really nice. And it's only $25. Okay, and then we're gonna do that score line over here the same way. Not on the middle one, but on this last panel. Here we go. Okay, so here's our card base. Now we're gonna bring our designer series papers in here. I could have had these cut, but I didn't think about it. 
One of them is a little bigger. That's the one for the middle. So we're not going to cut that one. But we are going to cut our floral one. Top, left, to bottom, right. Make sure that I get this right. Don't let it move on you. Here we go. One. And then these two are my coordinating colors. And we're going to do top left to bottom right, same as we did for the first one. Here we go. And then the last one is from top right to bottom left. Yes, send me an email at kelly at a stamp above.com. I don't know, Arliss or somebody just told somebody, oh, Patricia told you to send to Sharon. Send Kelly an email and she'll pass it on. And I think you might be talking about the bow jig. And if that's the case, yes, that is true. And thank you very much for your help. <laughs> I always appreciate it. Okay, now, um, where did our little white panel go? Did I forget? Oh, here it is, right here. Okay, so that's going to go on there. We need to stamp our sentiment. And let me, where did it go? Oh, here's my stamps. Now, we're using this and this. So, I'm thinking daffodil. Because there's some very light, pale yellow in here. And let me find daffodil. That's Mango Melody. Here's Daffodil Delight. And then... I'm going to take this. Ooh, what am I going to do my words in? Just Jade? Yep, let's go with Just Jade. That's the card base is Just Jade. So here comes our words. I'm going to stamp that. And this, this word just fits in there just perfectly. And then we're going to punch it with our two-inch circle punch. And again, I'm going to kind of leave it up at the top here. And here's our sunflower or daisy or whatever you want to call it. Oh, is that really? Yeah, it is Daffodil Delight. It looks a little bit yellower than I thought it did. So you should probably use Bumblebee. It's very, it's, it's, the ink is close. Okay, so we already have die cut our um, scallop circle here. So we'll just get this ready to roll. And, whoops, oh, there we go. Okay, and then, oh, we have to do one on here, too. Get that back out, and we'll do, I almost stamped it right over my designer paper, and that would have made me very mad. Well, not super mad. About as mad as I got over the air conditioner, which wasn't really mad at all, was it? It's like, well, you know, things happen. And in the big scheme of things, it's a pretty little thing. I can deal with it. And if it wrecks my floor, well, whatever. <sighs> Can't wreck the floor that's already crappy, though. It has to wreck one of the good floors. Okay, anyways, enough about my problems. <laughs> We're going to fold on our score lines and burnish these edges. And Marcia says she loves to learn new fun folds. I do, too. Like, I love you guys know that I love fun folds like they make me happy and you know what's really funny is Haley said she's really she's been designing some cards for me so you guys will see those soon the um oh that reminds me the holiday mini catalog I can't show you the inside but it goes live next week on Tuesday August 4th the holiday mini catalog is that next hang on is that next week oh yeah it is Okay. Oh yeah. Um, it goes live next Tuesday on August 4th. If you don't have a demonstrator and you would like a copy of this, I would be happy to send it to you. Also, if you're going to request that, let me know if you need our big annual catalog because this thing has got a million ideas in it, all of our products, and then we have more products coming out August 4th. If you don't have a demonstrator and you'd like a set of the catalogs, just let me know. I'll be happy to mail them to you, but please make sure you include your address so we don't have to play 20 questions in an email. Many emails. That makes me crazy. <laughs> I 
I, and, and I know you guys have done it and it happens and it's funny and you don't really think about it, but here's what happens. Hi Kelly, I would love a catalog. Great, thank you so much for contacting me. Can you give me your address so can I mail one to you? <laughs> and I'm always kind of giggling to myself like, well, I need your address. <laughs> but yeah, so make sure you send me your address and I'll be able to get out, get it out much sooner than I don't want you waiting for it, right? Once you once you go, oh, I want that catalog. Well, I don't want you to have to wait and email back and forth a million times and it's a whole thing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Isn't this pretty? Now that that green is our green for our card base. And this one's gonna look different. And then I made an whoops, I made another really colorful one using the stripes that are in, let me show you, these stripes. So I can't wait to show you that one too. Okay, so here's, here's our fronts, okay. And now we're gonna take this one and put it here. So once you get all your, your stuff cut up, it's almost kind of like putting a little puzzle together, which is kind of neat, which reminds me, squirrel, I bought a puzzle at the dollar store for me and Molly to put together, and we haven't done that yet. And I told her I was going to take her to the movies, and we're going to have a grandma and Molly day. And I need to get on that. Like, I need to do that. I'm not going to be the grandma that promises the things and then doesn't follow through, right? Yeah, okay. So then we're going to do one right here. And that one goes here. Okay, this one isn't making me panic like the other one. I thought I cut, oh, cut it wrong. Just, it just got glue all over my hand. There we go. See, and then when you turn this back, you see that right there. And now we have to do this. And this one goes down here. Oops. And then I'm gonna get out a baby wipe because I'm pretty sure I'm fairly covered with glue. <laughs> I was doing a video, oh, from my online class the other day, and I told people, if you get glue all over, now things are sticky, right? So now when I pick up something, it's gonna stick to me, and I'm just gonna start having all kinds of problems. Just take a, cut yourself some slack, take a little break, wipe the glue off your fingers so that the rest of your stamping will go much better if you're not fighting things, right? Like glue and paper. Okay, here comes, isn't this cute? It's so cute. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right here. So I need to put glue on this side over here. This is our front, put that right in the middle. And then from the ribbon combo pack. Now you know if you order, there's a bunch of products, this ribbon pack, the um, dots, another roll of bumblebee ribbon, the designer series paper, brass foil sheets, the bundle, the sunflower bundle with the dies where, oh, here it is, all of this. And if you order that from me, you get my online class for free and a pre-cut cardstock pack that has eight cards, a note card holder, and eight note cards in it. Yeah, that's what's in there. That's all for $125. So you get all that stuff for free. The online class and the pre-cut card stock pack for eight cards and a note card holder and a note card, eight note cards. All the stuff to make all of those for free when you order this whole bundle from me for $125. Or you can order the online class and get the pre-cut cardstock pack for 40 bucks. Or you can order just the online class for $25 without the pre-cut cardstock pack. So there's several different ways that you can get this class from me. But can I just say that the cards in this class, eight different cards plus the note card box and the note card, it's they're phenomenal. They're just so, so pretty. And that's the one I'll be working on this week is getting the pre-cut cardstock done before we go camping in my summer home. And I think I'm going to put my bow right over here. It's just something kind of charming. And it got stuff sticking to me because I'm damp. 
<laughs> Is that too much information? I'm getting a little moist now. <laughs> That's funny. My friend Dina hates the word moist, so I like to use it a lot. She doesn't watch me. <laughs> but it is funny. I do like to tease her. Okay, so here's our little bow. Look at how cute that is. <gasps> oh, here's our envelope, you guys. Super duper cute. And again, I would put that piece of cardstock on here. That white crummy cardstock that I used with this card. I don't know what I did with it, but I would put that on here. Yeah, it's lost so that I didn't have any extra postage or lumps and bumps in here, but this fits right in the envelope, just like that. Pretty, 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 right? Okay, do you wanna see the other one? Hang on. I told you I used the really pretty stripes, right? Here's the envelope, and here's the other one that I made. This is Poppy Parade. And then I use this, these flowers. I use Daffodil Delight and Poppy Parade for my words. I use, oh, I forgot to put on, hang on, I gotta put on a couple little embellishes. Some of our little dots again. And I think I'll do a yellow and a green. And I gotta put one more on. How about just another green one? I have a lot of green ones, so I'll just put another little green one right there. There we go. And this is the other one that I made. Cute, right? What do you guys think? Yay! So, now we have one, two, three. These, again, are called Twisted Gatefold. Oh, here's our envelope for this one. And here's our envelope. Oh, that piece of cardstock is right in here. Hello. And our envelope for this one. I like this too. It's very subtle, very pretty. And then we have, where did my card go for the challenge? Hmm, I lost it, who knows? It's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Here's our mystery stamping challenge. So this is our card that we're going to do the mystery stamping challenge with. So I'll fill you in on all that information in a post on my Facebook page. And then I told you I was going to show you a bunch of cards using the Celebrate Sunflowers. So here we go. Beautiful, beautiful, right? This was a blog hop that I did. This is the Marvelous Magenta and that's gold embossed. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Oh, Kimberly says she loves the yellow and the green the best. Thank you. This was just a last minute. I'm like, oh, I should do jade. I should do just jade. And I love this gingham ribbon, right? Okay, so gold embossed with gold foil paper. Um, this card is actually the same as this one. It's just a different color. That's um, petal pink, and this is Bermuda Bay. So we got those two. This is a fun fold. Oops. Isn't that cool? Yeah, a little fun fold there. This is a swap card that I got. I love this little um, wood grain designer series paper down the side and then purple was really pretty. This is, this is another, who made this? Cindy Ewerts, another beautiful swap card. She used the Tasteful textile folder, which is included if you get the whole product bundle from me. You get an embossing folder, too. Very, very pretty. <gasps> Look at this one. This is a little fun fold, right? That's pretty in that misty moonlight. And we have this beauty. Holy cow. Oops, oops, hang on. This is by Jay Shante. It opens. There we go. <laughs> gorgeous, 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 right? And this one was from D. Esplana, and I showed this one to you guys before. It's a belly band. And then watch. Woo! Know that you are loved. Woo! Yeah. Very, very cool. I always have to put this back together, otherwise I will not get it back together, and then I will lose it, and then I won't be able to show it to you guys again. There we go. Here's another really cool one, right? 
and another one this one's really simple but I love it I love the colors I love all the sunflowers lined up here's another really cute one with the little sunflower right and there's that embossing folder in there again designer series paper this is super cute I like this layout who made this I don't know I might have to use that um, this one does something this is from Sarah Simon. Oh, it ties. Hang on. Oh, I think it goes this way. We'll see. If the ribbon has it tied shut right there. Oh my goodness. Yes, it does. Look at that. Ready? Boom. 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 Oh my lord. That is crazy beautiful. Do you guys want to learn how to make that? I think maybe we should do that. I know Sarah would say, yeah, absolutely. I think we'll set that one aside. Oh, let me put this back here. Okay, here's another super pretty one. Love the colors. And they actually cut that detailed sunflower. So the detailed sunflower that's on here, they cut it out of the designer series paper. That's a really cool idea. Whose card is this? This is Kara Pazert. Here's another one, very, very pretty. I love this little scalloped rectangle in the background. That's cool. Who made this one? Um, no cool. There's no name on it. This is pretty too. This is an easy, quick and easy card. Love, love this. Very pretty. This is by my friend Lori Krause. Oh, and that's my card. <laughs> Oh, I gotta put this back with these cards so that if I show people again, I remember whose it is. It's so pretty. Okay, you guys, three different classes. Celebrate Sunflower. Celebrate Sunflowers is an online class. Also, So Much Happy is an online class that I have right now. As well as Artistry Blooms. I still have some nothing, nothing's better than the little candy, coffee, cookie um, bundle. I have some of those left. I've got just a, I'm making extras now because the catalog is good for a, a whole year, right? So I will, um, I figured I'd better make extras and that way people won't get disappointed. Now, I was gonna tell you about this stripper pole. I don't know if I should turn my camera around because when we turn the camera around, it usually starts breaking up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It starts freezing. Like um, Kathy said it was doing a little earlier. So yeah, Sharon says stripper pole. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it around. We'll we'll see. If, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I'm gonna turn it around. You guys can tell me if you can still hear me and I'm not freezing up. So here's the stripper pole story. So um the what do you call that? The there's a little footstool. It's a fold-up footstool, and it was when you when you walk down the hallway from my office, you can go into the living room, or you can go into the kitchen, or down the hall, or out the front door. So there's like a whole bunch of things happening right there. And so the wall between the kitchen and living room, this footstool that folds up and goes in between the refrigerator and the cabinet, it was sitting against the wall. Well, right there on the floor is a pan of dry cat food. And that's against this wall. And then over here is a bowl, a big bowl of water for the cats. And um, I walked in the kitchen. Steve was sitting in the kitchen. I said something to him. I moved. When I moved that footstool, I bumped it and it started falling over. And when it started falling over, I have flip flops on. Hang on, I'm just scrolling my screen here. I have flip-flops on and I jump backwards out of the way so that it doesn't smash my toes. I jump back. Well, the footstool fell and it hit the tin pan of cat food. The cat food flew all over the place. In the meantime, I jumped back so I wouldn't smash my feet. When I jumped back, I stepped on the edge of the water bowl and the water bowl spilled all over the floor. <laughs> Hardy show <laughs> and I'm like jumping around and Steve is sitting in the kitchen at the island and he's just watching this calamity like what in the hell are you doing <laughs> so anyway
anyways, I'm like kind of flustered. Now I have all this water to clean up and cat food laying all over the place. <laughs> but my toes aren't smashed. And I like composed myself and cleaned up the mess and I came back in my office and I'm sitting in here and I'm working and working on stamping and having fun and whatever. He comes walking in and let me see if I can remember how he said this. He goes, in light of what just happened in the kitchen, hang on, I gotta, I gotta get this right. Yeah, in light of what just happened in the kitchen, I have canceled the installation of the stripper pole in our bedroom. I'm afraid you might hurt yourself. <laughs> I almost wet my pants. <laughs> First of all, I am not getting on any stripper pole. <laughs> but it was funny. It was so funny. I just had to share that with you guys. So that's the stripper pole story. <laughs> the whole calamity that happened in the kitchen was just hysterical. I was a little ticked off at first because I didn't have time for all that to happen. And then I had to clean it up and whatever. But it was pretty funny. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys some of the things in my mail bin here. So I can share with you. First of all, this is from Lisa D'Alessandro. Lisa sent me... Oh, hang on, I gotta get her address off of here. Lisa sent me this beautiful card. Look at that envelope, right? Kelly, beautiful card. Yeah, gorgeous. And it says, I heard you're celebrating a belated birthday this year. Bet all those other fools sent birthdays on time. And what a cute saying when you send a birthday card late. Super funny. But what she sent me, will you look at this? This is an entire box of chocolates, a huge box of chocolates. And when I, um, I was talking to her the other day, she's on my team and she told me there's 55 pieces of candy in this box to celebrate my 55 year old birthday. How fun is that? Right? And she also said, you can share with Steve and Haley if you want right here on the little note. And what a cute way to decorate the box, right? With some of the designer series paper. And I have to tell you that Haley won't eat anything in here. She's so picky. But Steve and I have been really enjoying this box of chocolates. So, Lisa, thank you so much. You are so sweet. And 55 pieces of candy. <laughs> All right, what else do we have here? Oh, let me grab the bucket. Can you guys hear me okay? Like, is it breaking up like it sometimes does? I hope not. There goes my diet. Yeah, I know, right? I've been doing really good going for my bike rides and stuff, so... Um, oh, where did my... Hang on, I have to... I have to share. I got a little gift from my friend Barb, but now it's missing. Oh my gosh, who stole my unicorn? If he took my unicorn, he is in big trouble. He didn't. Are you ready for this? Ready? My friend Barb sent this. It's a unicorn. Is it not the cutest little thing? And its horn lights up and it makes that noise. So I go up to Steve and I do that to him. And he told me he's going to wreck my unicorn because he hates it. And then I go... You might just think it's a it's a it's a nutcase whole thing being married to me. <laughs> but it's pretty funny. He hates the unicorn. Okay, let me grab some more mail. Oh, I have to thank Cindy Lesk Lesko for the chocolates. And this is all I have left. <laughs> she sent me this box of the prettiest little chocolates for my birthday, and I ate them all. All of them. So the chocolates were from um, Indulgence Chocolatiers, truly exceptional chocolate. And she said her daughter works there. And I believe they're in Milwaukee. So, Cindy, thank you so much. I loved the chocolates. I ate all of them. What is this? Oh, that's probably swap cards. Okay, 
here comes here comes birthday cards. I'm going to share a few with you, and then I have to get off the phone. Or the phone. I have to get off of here. So that I can go to the bathroom and clean up the water flood in my office. This is from Luba. Look at how pretty this is. And it used sparkly paper here, you guys. Oh, let me mirror my screen. That's usually when things get all jacked up. So just stay with me. I'm going to mirror my screen so things aren't backwards. Then you guys can tell me if you can still hear me. Oh, Arla said she didn't have any freezing tonight. That's awesome. Like the screen freezing. Look at how pretty that is. Thank you so much, Luba. You are the sweetest. <gasps> Here comes another really pretty card. <gasps> Look at this one. This is from Chris Jensen. Oh, Han, I got to make it do its thing. Ready? Look, this is a diorama card. Is that not super cute? Thank you, Chris. Another birthday card. Absolutely beautiful. Then we have Sandy Bennett. This beautiful card. Yeah. Oh, is my screen? Can you guys read it? There it is. Sorry, I thought I did it, but then I didn't. Beautiful. Yeah. This is really pretty. Very pretty. Thank you so much, Sandy. And... This one was for Haley, and she told me I could share it. This was from Rhonda Hargett. I love just these strips of designer paper. Is that not just really cool? What a great idea. And then, hang on. This is from Susan Hine, Summer of Sun. Oops, hang on. I think there was some sequins in here, too. But look at how cute that is, right? And then there's a sun on the inside, too very very cute thank you so much Susan then this is from my upline Ann Hebner this uses the celebrate sun sunflowers beautiful beautiful oh and I love the big greeting right oh let me see if I can get it straight very very cool and I'll put that with my sunflower cards where did they go right there okay then, this one is from Jamie Lency. <gasps> this is so pretty. Hang on. Oh, I got two of them. Is this, yeah, this one is mine. Look at how cute this is. Isn't that adorable? Yeah. And then the inside, very, very cute. Love it. And she sent me a wonderful note. And then, hang on. This one is from Cheryl Rush. Look at how pretty that is. Love it. Love the colors. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, there's Cheryl's envelope. Oh, look how cute her envelope is. Yeah. Where did Jamie's envelope go? Oh, Jamie's got designer series paper on hers, too. Hey, we got to give credit, right? Then I have, I think this is Cindy Lesko. Yep. This is Cindy Lesko. She's going to be the one, hang on, doing the bow jigs, her husband. So, yay! Very, very pretty. Thank you so much, Cindy. Then we have Sue Tyler. Look how pretty this is. This is the sunflower set again. You guys got to get the online class. It's really cool. Not lying. I don't lie. Well, sometimes I tell little white lies. Like, so a little white lie, if somebody comes up and says, I just got my hair cut, what do you think? You don't tell somebody it looks terrible, right? That would be a little white lie when you say, oh, that's a good length for you. <laughs> you don't have to tell them it looks good if it's ugly, but you don't tell them it's ugly, right? My mama taught me some manners. Okay, then, yeah, guys, pick what they want to hear. This one is from Sharon Moyer. Look at how pretty that is. Love that ornate garden set. Yeah, that's a great set of dyes, Sharon. Thank you so much. This is from Deborah Vine. Whoops, hang on. Oh, she put a little piece in there so that her embellishments won't poke through. <gasps> Look at how pretty that is. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, beautiful. Oh yeah, um, somebody's asking salad. What does somebody want to know about the salad? You guys want to know my summer salad recipe? Oh, wait, I got to show you this. Look at how this opens. Yeah, isn't that pretty? So, get your pens ready, or you can fast forward to the end of this video and get this recipe again. 
My summer salad is two cups of Miracle Whip, three tablespoons of white vinegar, and a cup of sugar. And that's your sauce. And then you just cut up, or I break up cauliflower, broccoli, chop up some carrots, a pound of bacon, fry your bacon up, let it, you know, sit, and then crumble it on top, and then lick your fingers, like, you have to lick your fingers when you're done doing the bacon. That's like a rule. And then, oh, and a half a red onion. Chop that up, and not real finely chopped, kind of chunky. Chop that up. So you put it in a bucket, in a bucket, and so you got your cauliflower, your broccoli, your carrots, your red onion, your bacon crumbles, and then you dump this, you mix the sauce up in a bowl, and you dump it on top and leave it sit like overnight. Mine only sat for like five hours or so. <gasps> so good. There's the recipe. Pretty easy. The only thing that's really time consuming is um, the bacon, right? And cutting all the stuff up. Okay, so this, oh, is this for Haley? Yeah, this is Haley's birthday present. I mean, birthday card. Isn't that pretty? Look how pretty that is. Yeah, and this is from Faleen Mays. And Faleen is the one. I think she said her mom made this cute little crown for Val, right? Ah, super cute. So thank you, Faleen. I gotta remember to set that aside. Okay, hang on, who's this from? This, oh, this was from Faleen. Okay, cause she sent me a card too. And I think this is it right here. Let me look. Yes, look at how cute this is. Ah, so pretty. Oh, cheese. Don't forget the cheddar cheese, Cynthia. Yes, um, like, I don't know, a couple of handfuls of cheese. Maybe one cup or two, I don't know. But put in cheese. Did I forget the cheese? I did. I totally forgot to put the cheese in my summer salad. <laughs> I don't think there's any cheese in it. And it's out in the garage. I can't forget that because otherwise nobody will eat it. And I don't know sent me this card hang on it's in a plastic envelope let me look oh Faleen did look at how pretty that is is that cool love it this is from Faleen also okay so hang on then oh hang on hang on hang on hang on we got Oh, this is another one for Haley, and this is from Kathy Larson. Isn't that cute? Wash your hands. <laughs> uh, it says, not alone, just a part on the inside. So that was super cute. Here comes some more. Are you guys still with me? What time is it? Oh my gosh, it's almost 8.42. I got to get off of here. This is from Denise, my friend Denise here in um, the area. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, she makes really pretty cards. And we got Debbie Foster. Ooh, she sent me this one. This uses that paper we used tonight. Hang on. Ugh. On this card, same, same paper. Super pretty. Love it. Thank you, Debbie. Cards by Christine. This is from Christine. Very pretty. Love that new punch. Then we have Cindy Benward. She is the late night stamper. Look at how pretty this is. This uses that peony bundle that's new. Yeah. And this one is from Marsha Fetner. Did I, guess, did I show you guys this one yet? I think I might have shown it to you. Oh, look it. Oh, hang on. This is a snowflake for Val's first Christmas. Look at how cute that is. She put this little tag on there. Oh my Lord, Cindy, you are just the sweetest. I'm gonna keep that right there. I love, this is a, this has dual tags in it. Yeah, I think I showed this one to you guys before. Super, super cool. And I got a couple more here to share with you. This is from Connie Pisaki. Yeah, 
beautiful it uses again the celebrate sunflowers paper isn't that pretty yeah beautiful and Elaine Reback. look at this beer and Packers cheese and crackers beer and Packers <laughs> the state of Wisconsin there in case anybody doesn't know that and it says happy birthday a little late hope your day was splendid thanks Elaine you're super sweet all right, you guys, I think we got it. We got it covered. Yeah, Luba says that Snowflake was a lot of work. Yes, it was, and it is beautiful. And I'm going to make sure Haley gets it for Val. She's going to love this. This is just so pretty. Yeah, Val's getting really big. She's completely rolling over all the time. And she rolls over from her back to her stomach, which is the hard way to do it. I told you guys she was rolling over a couple weeks ago or two or three weeks ago already. Most babies don't do that till they're like five months old. That's what, that's what the internet says. So it must be true. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, anyways, so we know she's just like a complete prodigy already, right? <laughs> oh, and Darlene wants the peanut buster ice cream cake recipe. And I will share that with you. Thank you for the reminder so that I don't walk away. Um, I'll probably have to run to the bathroom. Oh my gosh, I got such a mess going on here. And um, I will get that recipe posted right away. I've got it right up here on my screen. So we should be good. I'm going to actually post the link, you guys, to this lady's... Um, this is a like a cooking person website that I got it from. How old is Val? She was born April 25th, so she's three months old now. Um, I'm going to post this right now, and then you guys can have the recipe, and oh, it's delicious. So don't make the mistake that I did, because here's what I did. I let my ice cream sit on the counter while I cooked the bacon for the summer salad and cut up all the things, and I made the cheesy hash browns, and then I thought the ice cream would be melted enough that I could spread it, you know, to make it. It was like complete liquid. <laughs> Don't leave your ice cream out when it's 100 degrees out that long. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's just so good. And and plus, the recipe, I think, is for an 8x10 or an 8, whatever, a cake pan is, 9x13. Gosh, Kelly. 9x13 cake pan. I just made a square pan of it, like a 9x9. Nine nine. That's what I made. So I... You know, I, I only used half the fudge and half the shell chocolate on the top and half the peanuts. And I bought a, a, like, is that a quart of ice cream? You know, those little containers that are about this big? Yeah, so that's what I used. And it was quite a bit. Um, chocolate graham crackers. Who knew? I didn't know there was chocolate graham crackers. Anyways, there is. They're right by the regular graham crackers. All right. Thank you so much, Bev. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful um, rest of your week. Please make sure if you need to place any orders, I always appreciate your orders. Share my video. You can click that share button right now, whether you're um, on Facebook. Share it later on YouTube. Give me a thumbs up. That's always helpful in all the analytic-y, crazy internet stuff we don't understand. But it all helps. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Have yourselves a wonderful week.